Sometimes you need to take an existing block and modify it into a new block, but without messing up the old block. So the explode command can help. Open up the annotation drawing file. Make sure you go to the model space tab. The explode command explodes a compound object when you want to modify its components separately instead of editing the block. That means it breaks it down and turns it into all of the basic instances or objects that it's made of. So if we copy one of these chair blocks, we'll put it anywhere on our file. And if we explode it, now your explode command is just explode, or you can type in the letter X for explode, or as usual, it's right here on the ribbon. Go to the Home tab, Modify Panel, and right here, Explode. Pick the object, press Enter, and there you go. These blocks are still intact. This is basic line work. We have a few ellipses, polylines, etc. Now the Explode command will also explode other types of objects, like polylines. It will break them up into their basic objects, like in this case a line and an arc. And this polyline was only one type of item, but it turns it into an arc. You can also explode multi-line text, and that will turn those into single line text. There are instances when you may want to do this, but typically you're not going to. Now that we have this chair exploded, we can make some minor changes. Generating new line work, but yet similar to our old line work. Doing a lot of the work for us already, so that we only had to make a few modifications. And now we can make a new block. We can call it chair two, pick our insertion point, pick our objects, and there we go. And now when we go to insert a chair, we have two options. We have chair, and we have huh, air two. I mistyped in the name. That's fine. If you do create a block and give it the wrong name, let me show you a trick. Use the rename command. Go to the blocks. Here's air2. Puts the name here. That's the current name. And give it a new name. Chair-2. There you go. Everything else is the same. It's a block. And it's called chair-2. There you go. So that's why you would want to explode something like a block. Now let's look at something else. Let's open up the attributed block example. Now in this case, we have an attributed block. What happens if we explode it? Type in the letter X for explode, press enter, select the block, and enter again. Wow. We lost all the information in it that we had. And it's now an attribute again, but when you double click it, these are the fields you get, just like when you created the attributes. Well, if that's what you're looking for, then that's okay. But a lot of times you don't want to do that. In fact, most of the time you don't want to ever really explode a block, especially an attributed block. Now let's undo everything. I want to show you something. All of these attributes have text put into them. Let's put in something special too. Change a couple of them. Something special. Now if we explode it, we lose that. Okay, undo. I want to show you a different command. It works very similarly to the explode command. But when it comes to attributed blocks, it will retain the values you've inserted. And it's called burst. Press enter, select the block, press enter again. There you go. Say, well, it doesn't look any different. Sure it does. Look, that's just a line. This sheet title is just single line text. And that something special that I put in just for you is still there. So if you need to explode an attributed block for some reason, 
think about it for a second. What are you trying to achieve? Do you want to keep the values that you've put in there or do you want to just lose it all? If you want to keep it, use the burst command instead of the explode command.